again and welcome to STLC Today TV. I'm your host, Maynard Eaton. We're coming from our headquarters here on Auburn Avenue in Atlanta. Our president and CEO, Dr. Charles Steele Jr. Dr. Steele, voting rights kind of held up in Congress and the Senate by one man. Are you a po And he met with civil rights leaders. Are the civil rights leaders that he met with supposedly not getting their job done? Uh, may I always say, in my cliche, as you know, and uh, if my wife forget when I make my transition to go home with God, put on my tombstone that politics cannot free the oppressed. The oppressed must free politics. I rest my case. But don't civil rights leaders like yourself impact, influence politics? Yes, you impact it in volume, in collaboration, yeah. in education. That's why we're in the, the situation we're in today. Ain't nothing changed. Yeah, suppression of the vote. We always had suppression of the vote. But what gave us a little relief was the 1965 Voter Rights Act. But June the 25th, 2013, it was gutted. And we went to sleep. We, I'm included. I'm not charging nobody but me, but I was there on the steps of the U.S. Supreme Court with former state Senator Hank Sanders and Fire Rose and 50 other people eight years ago. So we have to collaborate and be proactive. This bill is named after the late John Lewis. Politically, is that a problem? Is this focused on a personality and not necessarily a problem? Well, it, it, people can always make it a problem. Uh -huh. uh, it's not a problem, but they always looking for a way to make it a problem. They don't want, even with Dr. King, there are folks today that still dislike, and most of them who disliked him actually hated him. And I'm just being kind to the matter, as you know, even within the African-American community. He was not uh, majority liked. Dr. King was hated, and it was quoted by someone very close to him, that he was the most hated man in America. And amongst his own people, amongst his own staff or SCLC membership, because you caught a lot of that flack when you came on board. Oh, of course. Uh, it goes with the territory. Yeah. Absolutely. I sure did. And you were close to the scene because you one of the first journalists that I related to and been knowing you for a number of years. But you know the inside and the outside. Not only... From within, and Joe Lowry, Dr. Joe Lowry talked about this a lot. The enemy from within as well as without. Uh -huh. You always had this traditionally, and it would forever be on the conscience of a leader. Dr. King knew this. Yeah. He talked about it just the day or the evening prior to his assassination, as you know, man. A leader knows this. And all of the smiles and the closeness that people bring, when God or not you and anoint you and call you, you know who they are. That is still, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're 14 years in this president's CEO seat, correct? When I first came around here, the lights were off and you're in another building. I mean, this organization, again, as a journalist, was darn near dead. What happened? Other than you. God. Or you. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not me. It's God. It's not me. But you do have to have a leader. Yeah. Uh, but you you know the history. You've lived it. So I lived it all my life. And what, you know what? I was telling someone the other day, what's so interesting about it, and many of our young folks don't see it, and all folks, because you don't draw no line. you never too late to do what is right and to lead in terms of your influence and commitment to God to do what's right, to help those who are less fortunate. What is so important? is that I heard George John Engel, who's retired now, say this many times. When we were, and he and I have been to Africa many of times. When we were going to Africa, for an example, with all those leaders, mm -hmm. Mrs. Coretta Scott King, Dr. Joseph Lowry, uh, Mr. Louis Farrakhan, and the list just goes on, many elected officials, ambassador, ambassador Andrew Young. We were on that trip with all of these people. And Judge England noticed that I was taking notes. I was taking notes. And I had a headphone with the recording on the plane, in the audience, listening. Because God had told me, whenever it comes, be ready. Be ready. This is a science. Can't know anybody lead when it's not upon you to be anointed 
and to have a track record of God anointing you to be successful in something. Now, all I'm saying is that you must pay the price and pay the dues of whatever you do. What you also saying? It's a calling of some sort. It's a calling. Yeah. Most definitely, it's a calling. Some some people are called to certain positions that have boundaries. But when God calls you to other positions without boundaries, as you know, I have friends all over the world. And this is not an ego trip. It's a real trip to convey to people. And, and I've been kicked out of countries. <laughs> My wife stayed and they didn't want me. <laughs> well, we and know she, why that is. <laughs> well, they were afraid I'm going to talk too much. <laughs> and my wife said, 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 babe, I'm coming back. I said, no, they want me. You stay there. And I won't even elaborate on that. But even around the world, they know you before you get there. Some will receive you and treat you very royally and some won't. So will resent you. They resent you. And and because of what you stand for. Dr. King went through it. He went and, and I travel the world in most places that Dr. King had already traveled. So I can get that experience. How many folks know that when he landed in West Berlin, the US Embassy confiscated his passport so he couldn't go to East Berlin? Because they were afraid. Who are they? The Americans were afraid that he was going to talk about how bad racism is in this country and you were going to be talking about the Russians. But he went without a passport because they had confiscated it and they let him in. Sitting in his seat now, racism is still alive and, and, and <laughs> still alive and well. Never left. Right. Never left. How does that feel? You, I mean, you the mantle is passed along to you. Yeah, but, but, but I'm in the same position as Dr. King spiritually. Uh, I wouldn't be here if I didn't believe in the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I know whose I am, and I know who's responsible for me, who woke me up. This we, hear, we hear other names out here now. We don't we don't even hear some of the soldiers from the past, like Doctor, uh, like you, and also Doctor uh, uh, Lafayette, Bernard Lafayette, our our our, our Lord chairman. Lord knows our chairman. chairman. Oh, the historicity. You hear, yeah, you don't hear the names. The historicity. Dr. King was the same way. Dr. King was kicked out of a lot of the religious organizations. Not to be uh, specific, I don't want to be on this interview, but Dr. King was not received by a lot of religious organizations. He was a Lone Ranger, but he kept on going. And people don't want to talk about that now. Same as... The Board of Education, State of Georgia, just passed a resolution. They don't want to talk about racism in school. How can you correct your failures, Mr. Eaton? How can you correct the fallouts of treating people uh, inhumanely if you don't know what the focus point that brought it to fruition and is still embedded today because we never accepted the fact? The truth hurts. The truth hurts, but the truth will do what? Set you free. But also about telling the truth, showing the truth. You were just telling me earlier that some plans are underway to do a documentary about you and Dr. Lafayette in terms of their earlier commitment and what it means today. What he did, what you've done, does that mean something to folks today? Well, it means a lot to me as well as to you too because you always talk about it and to my family. And now I can't speak for no one else. I know how my family feel and I know how Dr. Lafayette feel. In terms of his history, Dr. Bernard Lafayette history is so pertinent today than it was uh, 50 years ago. He was the first to get to Selma. He was there two years, Mr. Eaton, before anyone else. Why? Because he wasn't afraid. <laughs> Dr. Lafayette was not afraid when he heard the system say, you better not go down there because you're going to get killed. Because white folks are too mean and black folks or too scared. scared. <laughs> you know the story. He went. He went. And he was strategizing with others. And I have to call the name Miss Amelia Boynton. He went. Yeah. That's why what you were just articulating is, is why you, you were featured on this upcoming edition, our convention issue of uh, SCLC National Magazine, along with uh, Dr. Lafayette, because of... I'd like to use your word, your historicity. But also it means something in this upcoming convention we're having, does it not? Yeah, yes, yes, it does, you know. Um, but we have a convention every day. 
<laughs> in this office you do I'm telling you. <laughs> and we can't get hung up on conventions we have to get hung up on having a commitment daily and doing whatever it takes to change the evenness as, as, as uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said so eloquently that silence in the face of evil is evil itself <laughs> I think we're going to end on that note this is our leader our, our national president and CEO, Dr. Charles Steele Jr. He was in the preaching mode today. <laughs> we'll see you next week.